Excellent. So um, deliberately provocative title here, why your employee idea campaigns don't work. Um, we want to talk to you about why they don't work, why they do work, what we've learned from working with lots of organizations. So as a little bit of housekeeping first, let's get the definitions straight. Employee idea is pretty simple. It's those little ideas, bits of insight that come from your people, your colleagues within an organization. Um, these can come from anywhere across the business uh, and they might be big, small, they might be uh, transformative or um, kind of just little, little improvements. They all kind of count towards employee ideas. And when we're talking about employee ideas campaigns, we're talking about just a structured way for you to listen to these ideas and to find the best ones and to act on them. So again, these could be really long, never-ending structured campaigns. They could be, tell us your idea about anything um, and we'll work on it. Or it could be short, sharp bursts, your kind of one or two day CEO-led um, employee idea campaigns and just about anything in between. Organizations across the globe have been um, listening to employee ideas for probably uh, 100 years at this point. Um, and they do that for a number of reasons. The first reason that we see from our experience from our clients and the market is that uh, innovation, the innovation teams or the CEO or, uh, are bringing in employee idea campaigns to help mold the whole employee base around the concept of innovation and helps it involve employees in innovation. So in delivering new products and services to clients or improving the ways in which a business is working. The second reason that a company might bring in employee ideas campaigns is really around improvement. So this is rather than the kind of big picture reinvent the wheel stuff, this is the everyday improvement, the everyday 1% better um, type ideas. And the third real reason is for employee engagement. So I don't know if you, anyone on this call has ever had that experience within a large corporate, I know I have, um, of feeling like you have ideas that could be beneficial to the business and, and not having anywhere to go or not feeling like it's encouraged to speak up. Um, but really, by running employee idea campaigns well, you can kind of break that down. You can make sure that your employees do feel listened to and do feel like there's somewhere to go when they have ideas. Why should you listen to us? Well, uh, I've been geeking out about um, ideas for the best part of uh, a decade now, um, both at a large corporate where I felt like I had lots of ideas and, and not many places to go to share them, then at a consultancy where I've worked on kind of designing and building bespoke solutions in this space. And for the last four years, building our company, Sideways 6, um, where we're kind of built on this idea of running employee idea campaigns in places that suit your employees where we're working with about 3 million employees in our kind of client base at the moment um, to help our clients to listen to and act on employee ideas. So without further ado, further, further, ado, further ado, let's get, let's get into it. Um, what are the learnings that we've kind of drawn out from 3 million employees from four years of employee ideas? Number one, uh, pretty popular phase, phrase since Simon Sinek's uh, book and TED talk, but um, not starting with why can be a huge, a huge um, barrier to success within this space. I think it's really important that you are acting with intention, that you understand why you are doing this in the first place. Why is it that you are bothering to be on this webinar? Why is it that you are looking into um, the best ways to run employee ideas campaigns? There must be a reason that this all started. And is that reason going to be powerful enough for you to make sure that it is uh, that the campaigns are successful through to the end? Because if you haven't got that why, if you haven't got that kind of burning reason that everyone can rally around, that you can use to get the resource that you need to run successful campaigns, that you can use to infuse employees who want to get involved, that you can use to infuse the kind of reviewers and, the, and the, all those various stakeholders that you need to get excited about this campaign, then it's gonna um, it's gonna fall flat. It's gonna feel like there is no need, and uh, and therefore you're not going to be able to get the engagement that you need. So we look at look at the possible kind of whys, and uh, this is a, a sadly a popular one that, that we have seen with clients before working with them, is a consultant told us to do it and told us that our competitors are, are listening to employee ideas, and, and so we better do it. Um, and so we've set up kind of some guys in the corner of the room that will that will um, that will look into this. And unfortunately, whilst that might be good enough to get the ball rolling, it's 
rarely good enough to to kind of sustain through um, planning, launching, uh, communicating, uh, and then um, evaluating ideas, getting people to get involved, and, and all the way through to actually actioning the ideas. And, and that's really what you're looking for here is something which can keep the attention and enthusiasm all the way along that process. Again, we got told we should, so we went to a conference and employee ideas was on the agenda, so, so now we're doing it. Not quite strong enough. Some of the things that work really, really well is um, in reaction to specific challenges that you are facing as an organization. So these can be from um, the business challenges. Um, so what I mean by that, it may be that you are looking to save costs and you understand that employees might know uh, some of the pockets of, of how to do that. You're looking to bring new products to market and you know that employees speaking to customers might have the kind of voice of the customer that can help to shape those products. Or um, this could be even a kind of employee engagement challenge. So actually you could have heard back from feedback on your employee engagement survey that people don't feel listened to and they don't feel like there's a home for ideas within your organization and if listening to people is one of your values you could actually the why could it could be solving that it could be actually we do want people to feel like they're listened to another fantastic why is actually for the long-term future of the business i mean we've all heard about half of the fortune 500 from 30 years ago no longer being in place we've all had, we all know the importance of innovating and we all kind of inherently understand that at the front line of our business at the level in which people are speaking to clients all day long or customers all day long there is um, information which can help to shape the long-term future of business and so giving ownership of that long-term future to employees can be a fantastic kind of reason um, for, for doing this and actually acting on that insight as well it's not all about the ownership it's not all about the engagement but there's so much information there which can help you they're all really strong so once you have that why, once you have that solid reason, which is going to be compelling enough to kind of get everyone around and get everyone uh, working really hard on making this a success, the next step is to define what this um, campaign, what this challenge looks like. Now, when we're talking about defining the challenge, what we're saying is, well, now we know why we're doing this. What makes a what makes a good idea? I'm sure you'll all understand that, like. A good idea isn't a isn't a definite thing. So what's a good idea for Tesco it might not be a good idea for Balfour BT might not be a good idea for British Airways. Um, and so you, that's something that you really need to need to be thinking about. So um, on this, for example, let's use Tesco. They're, they're not a client of ours, so feel quite comfortable using them. Um, say they want to run a campaign to help to cut costs across the business. Um, a good idea is one which helps to cut those costs, helps to do it fairly quickly, and helps to do it within the brand values that Tesco, Tesco kind of live every day. A uh, good idea is not something which uh, doesn't answer that brief. So defining the challenge, just to recap, you want to know what your why is, you want to know what you're trying to achieve, and you want to make it really public and really transparent what the constraints are on um, ideas that could be considered to be uh, successful within this campaign. A trick that we've seen here to work really well in defining the challenge that you're setting to people is to um, involve your employees in this piece of the process as well. So rather than just kind of enforcing, right, we want your ideas on how to save money or right, we want your ideas on how to deliver in an incredible customer experience, think about what itches your employees kind of want scratching. So what is it that people are already talking about around the water cooler or in the kind of break rooms uh, that people already might have ideas about? What are the challenges that are kind of already on people's lips and how can you turn those into employee ideas drives? Where do people already feel that they can contribute? Um, because that's a really good place to start, uh, especially if you're earlier on in your employee ideas journey. There's an appendix to this. Um, we've called this 2B because it's this is a little bit more nuanced, but um, a lack of constraints, if you are early on in your employee ideas journey, um, can be a killer. So what do I mean by this? We have clients who do fantastically well with open-ended employee ideas campaigns that last um, indefinitely. So they are asking tens of thousands of employees, if you ever have an idea that you consider could improve our business, head over to this space 
um, and put it forward and we will listen and we will evaluate it. And that can do fantastically well. But I think that from our findings, your culture needs to be a, um, in a place of people speaking up. You need to have a culture whereby uh, ideas are shared, whereby this kind of thing is encouraged for that kind of campaign to work. If that's not there yet, if there isn't a precedent for people sharing ideas, for people speaking up, then actually what you might need is um, some constraints. So rather than opening things up uh, massively, uh, it can be really useful to say to people, actually, we are only looking for ideas that solve this specific challenge. It might be useful to constrain people on time, so you only have one to two weeks to, to answer this question. It might be, used to be useful to constrain people on budget, so how would you solve this challenge if you only had 100, 1,000 pounds to do so, or any other constraints that are kind of unique to your business. Something that's really useful here is um, a number of kind of innovation consultancies release um, decks of cards that, that deal with constraints. So 52 different constraints that you can think about during ideation. If you shoot us an email, then I, I will share that those resources with you. It can be quite interesting to think about. And this isn't just from our findings. So research kind of consistently shows that when you give people more constraints, they're going to come up with more varied uh, and actually um, uh, more solutions. And this has been proven by uh, kind of multiple bits of research over the years. A key thing to think about, which is our number three, is the amount to which you can actually make things happen, make change happen. What is your circle of influence, either as an individual, a leader of these campaigns, as a department within the organization? Where is it that you can actually um, action these ideas? So if we take go back to our Tesco example, if I am the finance director, if I am, uh, then, the, then the finance uh, based campaign makes a lot of sense. If I'm the finance director and I'm asking people to come up with a new marketing campaign without liaising with the marketing department, clearly that doesn't make too much sense. So you need to think about where you can actually um, make these ideas happen. And you need to go about getting if you need to, other parts of the organization on board. So again, if you're earlier on in your journey, then going about going and asking people for any idea whatsoever might be pretty tricky when you find out that there isn't buy-in from other departments to actually action these ideas. And if you can't action any ideas, then I would argue that this is pretty useless. Um, and so uh, it's a pretty kind of strong statement, but if you can't make that change happen, I would uh, seriously um, uh, think about whether your campaign is going to be fit for purpose. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't go out and run a campaign. It's just to think about that circle of influence and run a campaign which is either within your circle of influence or look at expanding your circle of influence by working with other parts of the organization. To make change happen, clearly you need uh, a bit of process, you need some resources, time and money, and then those relationships are key as well. The next topic that I wanted to bring up is um, diversity. So diversity of experience, of opinion, um, and then essentially making sure that the campaigns that you're running touch upon diverse groups of people so that you avoid uh, kind of groupthink in the answers that you, the ideas that you have surfaced within the organization. So clearly, um, Diversity of opinion is, is a good thing, but it's not, again, it's not just our experience here. It's also McKinsey, for example, have uh, discovered that when diverse groups of people work on problems, they come up with more and more diverse and better uh, ideas to solve those problems. And when we talk about diversity, we're talking about experiences. So we're talking about people from across the business who are living different processes, living different interactions with clients, living different kind of constraints all coming together to solve problems. We're talking about different ways of thinking. So this might be um, some people who have been who, who have been all the way down the kind of academic route, some people who haven't, um, and different diversity in terms of knowledge. So this is involving different uh, departments from across the business with different kind of functional specific knowledge into solving the same problems. And actually, when we bring this up with our clients in the early stages of planning campaigns, often they kind of, they kind of they understand it uh, and they say, right, so our audience needs to be diverse. But it's not just the audience. It's not just the people that you want to kind of contribute to submit their ideas, to put their ideas forward. It's also who is it that's going to um, 
review and prioritize these ideas? Who is it that's going to go away and action them? Because if you have a kind of bunch of clones in those positions as well, you're going to end up with that group thing, no matter how diverse your pool of um, ideators are in the beginning. So um, no feedback. This is this is something which um, I would say colours the experience of a lot of um, people we speak to are really early on in engagement processes. They say, yeah, employee ideas. I, I understand that. And and typically an experience like this comes to mind. So uh, they will be aware of some time that a business has run a suggestion scheme and they never heard anything back and it was complete silence and everyone kind of got discouraged um, and what that leads to is uh, without in the absence of feedback it leads to the idea black hole to the idea graveyard to the concept that actually well they asked and then they didn't do anything and so I'm not going to bother the next time and I would argue that if you get into the habit of this habits like this then it's almost worse than kind of uh, not asking for the ideas in the first place and so if you're a large organization, this can be pretty daunting because you're now thinking to yourself, well, if I'm opening up my, to an audience of thousands or tens of thousands of people, I've now got to, um, I've now actually got to uh, write out individual feedback to each of those people. Now, that's not the case, clearly. I mean, there are tools out there now for you to, to um, run kind of automatic or semi-automatic, semi-personalized feedback to people. Um, you can template this, you can think about a strategy beforehand on how you will deal with feedback at scale. Uh, but I would say that it does need to be part of your original planning and it is something that you need to make sure you have a strategy for. Give feedback often, so make sure that um, people are updated as their idea moves through your, your pipeline in the background. Uh, make sure that your feedback is consistent with what you were asking people to do in the first place. Again, another kind of pointer back to why you need to start with that why and why you need to start with a defined challenge. And actually make sure that the feedback is totally transparent uh, to the extent that you can do. So no one really wants to get told, uh, probably in public, that their idea is um, a bit silly and, uh, and not doable. Um, but where you're kind of praising people or where you're giving neutral feedback, try and make that as transparent as possible, as public as possible. Finally, um, a driver that we've seen before, and we see quite a lot actually, and typically before we start working with clients, is, is low or no engagement in employee idea campaigns. Now, if you followed the previous five and a half tips that I've given you, um, you're going to be on your way to getting engagement. If you're making it clear why this is, matters to the business and the change that can happen because of this campaign, that's fantastic. And if, you've, if you're targeting a diverse group of people uh, and if you're making the challenges relevant to them, that's going to be great. If you're giving regular feedback to the first idea submitters, you're going to be able to build engagement. All of this is going to lead to, to, to high engagement or to higher rates of engagement than if you didn't take those tips. But there is still other things to consider. Now, um, according to some research that came out last uh, tail end of last year in the Harvard Business Review, two of the key drivers to success of employee ideas are the scale of participants, so more participants equals higher success of employee idea campaigns, and more ideas. Pretty simple. And we always knew that, right? So when this first this concept first came about, uh, despite my kind of geeking out, I haven't been able to find the the, the first official instance of the employee ideas um, schemes. But here we have a picture from 1909 from the Heinz um, offices of uh, a worker putting forward an idea for for an improvement within Heinz. Um, and this is the classic suggestion box. And, and back then, people understood, right? We need to make this easy as possible for people to get involved. And the suggestion box in the corner of every every um, room uh, was made that really easy and engagement was really high and then we had the kind of proliferation of email within large organizations and you might have had an ideas at or a ceo at email inbox where you can invite people to put forward ideas and again super easy to get involved but i guess what these two um, ways of running employee ideas campaigns led to was a lot of manual work on the back end and a lot of effort uh, and a lack of process on the back end that probably scared people off from doing them, to be honest. So despite the fact that we all understood that engagement was key, there was this, this trend in, in the last kind of 10, 15 years of running 
employee ideas in siloed spaces, right? So ideas.com forward slash Tesco to go back to Tesco and to say, right, guys, we need you to to come and learn this this platform and and use it. And that's with the best of intentions. You can understand where it's come from, but it's led to a, a kind of fascinating thing, which is essentially if you build it, they won't come. And it turns out that it's actually quite difficult to get people to, to come and use these platforms. If you think about a classic kind of change model that we've that we've mod, um, modified a little bit here, you need to make people aware of the campaign. You need to make them want to engage in it. You then get the engagement, the action, and the change. Right? If you then model that against your typical um, idea management system or, or, or solution to this, you're going to end up with only kind of low hundreds of people within a twenty thousand person organization actually bothering to go through all of those steps. Now. We deal with this at Sideways 6 by kind of meeting people where they are. So we will connect our platform to, to whatever kind of um, collaboration platforms exist within an organization, Workplace, Yammer, et cetera. But it's not the only way of doing it. But the two th key things to, 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 to think about here, you need to make it easy, frictionless, and you need to meet people, need to meet people on their terms. So if time and budget allows, this means you can do this in-person ideation, ideation sessions. We've seen this run really, really well within our clients. So literally booking out a meeting room, inviting people, still running exactly the same kind of tips that we've talked to you about, still giving them a defined challenge, still making them understand the why, et cetera, uh, and doing it all in person. We've seen that work really well. We've also seen people kind of met on their terms in a number of ways, desk drops, um, kind of really old school uh, ways that actually work really, really well. But the key thing to think about is low friction and meet people on their terms. And then if you, and then the process that goes behind it is obviously clearly important. Otherwise you're going to end up drowned in an email inbox or drowned in uh, the kind of suggestions from a suggestion box. Um, but without that engagement, I'm afraid uh, there is low to no chance of success. So I've taken you through our uh, thinking here. Um, we have a lot, lot more to say, to be honest. Uh, and so I would love for you to get in touch, either to me, will.read at sideways6.com, or book a clinic with one of the team. Um, essentially, when we were putting this webinar together, we were trying to think about what might be useful uh, for you guys as attendees to, to follow up with. And we thought actually just making one of our, some of our team available to answer your questions, to kind of um, elaborate on any of this that might be interesting to you or to kind of poke some holes in your plans perhaps <laughs> and then show you some, 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 some good ways of doing things might be useful. So feel free to get in touch and I would love to answer any questions at all.